Hello, Mig Chow. Hello, men. This is Howard Dare. Thanks for stopping by. So, I want to expand upon my previous video dealing with emotional control for men. And I think this is an important topic because I see its influence throughout Mig Chow with other people and especially for myself. You know, this is something that I've experienced and I deal with and I would like to be able to overcome it, although I don't know if that's even possible. So let me tell you what I'm talking about here. Now, previously I was talking about not allowing our automatic emotions to take control over our behavior. Now, if you get angry, if you lose your temper, or if you get sad, or any number of feelings, it's not a choice. It's not like a person chooses to get angry. I'm going to have to tell you a little bit of a story, okay? And it's a true story about my own life. Now, as I mentioned, my mother was an alcoholic. Uh, she wasn't, a, she, she stopped when she got to be about a certain age, but then she took up gambling, okay? But there was a pattern of behavior that I grew up in. And as a young child, I didn't recognize the fact that I wasn't getting a lot of the basic care that a child needs. Needs. Just the consistency, you know, of a mother uh, taking care, doing laundry, cooking meals, looking after a child, things like that. But interestingly, since I never had it, I didn't really recognize its loss. And I actually kind of just adapted to the situation. In other words, when I would come home, if my mother was laid out drunk, I would just, you know, steal a couple quarters from her purse and go to the liquor store and, you know, get a candy bar and a soda. Maybe even treat a friend. Didn't bother me. Now, my mother was very hostile and mean-spirited towards me. She would say ugly things, but she wasn't violent or a threat in any sort of way. It was, it was a different type of violence. You know what I mean? It wasn't physical violence. Um... But this isn't the salient point about what I'm talking about. What would happen is, is that when my father came home, they they would get into an argument. And uh, this was a pattern. Now, now, it didn't happen every day. It would happen, you know, maybe two, three times a week, though. Maybe not even that often. But it would happen pretty regularly. And for me, growing up, and this went on you know, from the age of an infant into my late teens, uh, this was just normal. This is how I thought it was. Now, this was probably having, you know, a deep, profound effect on me as a child that would shape me moving forward. But I, I didn't I didn't recognize that. I just knew that this was, you know, part of my regular life. And it didn't even particularly bother me, as far as I could tell, as far as I remember. But it did establish a certain sort of behavior within me. Uh, no doubt, you know, I, I was mirroring and patterning, you know, and patterning. My behavior was patterned on my parents' behavior, with my mother getting drunk, writing bad checks, my father working hard. He was a good man. He uh, wasn't perfect. And then, you know, dealing with this internal domestic strife, arguments, Vi not violence. There was no violence, but there, was a, there were arguments and screaming and things like that. My mother was actually intentionally triggering my father. Uh, when she would drink, she would become very hostile. Don't worry this isn't a, like a whole total personal confession. I've got some points to make here. Um, she would antagonize him. She, she would she would become hostile and hateful. And she would say mean, ugly things. And uh, he would lose his temper eventually. And for me, this was just totally normal behavior. Now, my parents, I was living, we, we had moved to California when I was about three years old from back east, from New Jersey, actually. And this way of interacting, th this arguing and yelling, and throwing recriminations at someone and cursing at them and then stomping off and going into another room and then, you know, huffing and puffing with this adrenaline and hostility and anger for hours, you know, was what I thought life was. And, you know, I, I've heard an interesting expression, the idea that people back East, they're not very polite openly, you know, they'll, they'll call you a dumbass and tell you to get them, you know, out of their way and they don't really 
mince their words very much, but that beneath that, there is a willingness to help people and interact with people and just an understanding, compassion, even though the surface is quite hostile. And that on the West Coast, you had people being very polite and gracious on the surface with their words, but underneath, they really didn't care and wouldn't help you. Now, that that's a harsh judgment, you know, to put there. It, it was not, it's not so cut and dry. But this was another perception that I had developed. And as I got older, I started to think that my parents being from back east, uh, that this way of interacting was just normal. So as I got older, I would get into arguments with my father. Now, this was different from an argument with my mother. In many ways, he actually encouraged me to stand my ground, to defend my positions. He had, he had, an, he, he had taught me a lot about fighting and working out and stuff like that. I've got a, I've got a really funny story that I could tell you about that. 